Hello YouTube family. I just wanted to say rest in peace to my awesome amazing Aunt Mary. She passed away from a brain tumor. It's been a really rough year for me everybody. Yeah, my grandpa's sick, my stepdad's sick, my Aunt Mary that was sick. She just, you know, recently passed away. My stepdad and grandpa are still sick. Cousin's sick, aunt's sick. Not from COVID or anything. My dad's got um, um, pneumonia and uh, like his, his lungs keep clogging up with liquid and then his bowels are going into his lungs and, and my dad's all, my stepdad's all fucked up right now. My grandpa, he's just, you know, already 80 years old. He has from just the Navy and stuff and just all the surgeries he's had. Just sucks. And nobody's got COVID or anything. Um, like my cousins and aunts, they're just like sick. Sick, sick. This sucks, everybody. And, you know, me having to shoot my dog, that really fucked me up inside because that was like shooting my daughter. This sucks. I can handle any physical pain. I don't, you know, broken bones, this, getting shot, stabbed. I can handle all that, everybody. Have handled all that. It's just, you know, losing a loved one or having to put down somebody you love or any, it's, it's an emotional, it's, it's not like, you know, it's a different type of pain that hurts. It's, a, it's not like the type of pain that you could just pop a pill, smoke some weed, drink some alcohol, and it just goes away now. This shit stays with you. That, that this is why, um, this is why I believe mental depression or mental, um, like if you're hurting inside and you go to that type of stuff for a crutch, that just leads you down a dark path because you're always gonna want that alcohol, that pill, that this, that this or that to heal you all the time. This is why you have to be mentally strong, not only for yourself but for your loved ones, everybody. So that's just what I'm trying to do. No matter how bad it hurts inside or how sad or anything, just always remember, there's always a light at the other end of the tunnel. There's always going to be another day. Enjoy the family and friends that you still have around you. No matter how close you were with the it's, because I know a lot of it too is just, especially how close you are with somebody. That That's really, that really gets you. My, my Aunt Mary though, she was, she was a definition of a gangster. I, when I first moved out, to this side where I, where I am today. It was seeing a bald guy dress, you know, dressing up like a gang member and stuff. You know, muscle shirts, square shirts, all, all, you know, just shaved head, goatee. Everyone assumed that I spoke Spanish. When I didn't speak Spanish walking through gang neighborhoods, I would get jumped. But when I would go to work, having bruises and stuff all over my face. Oh, Aunt Mary didn't like that, everybody. Because I worked with her. And I was young. Like 15, 16 when all this was happening. I should say she made a couple phone calls. And Hell's Angels were out here on the quickness. And we're not talking about coming out here just to come out here. No. If you all know biker gangs, you all know. Yeah. And they were true Americans. They didn't like racists. And what was happening to me was a type of racism. I was getting beat up because I didn't speak Spanish. They judged me for the color of my skin. And that happened too with um, a couple black gangs out here too. They saw me and they thought I was from Mexican gangs or whatever and I'm just like, no, 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 I'm just, you know, I always shook my hand up for respect and like, how you guys doing? You know where you're at? Yeah, I know where I'm at, but I need to walk through here to get to there. I'm not here to, you know, disrespect your guys' territory, none of that. You know, I always brought peace. I always came with peace. They didn't care. Racial slurs beat my ass. How it went with, you know, walking through Mexican gangs, Hispanic gangs, I mean. So I said, everyone's ra every group, every race has a racist. I've seen it all, been through it all. The only people I haven't been jumped by were white people. Because usually, even if it's 20 white people, uh, just like at the movie theaters, I'd walk right through that group and they're just, they'd all shit their pants. They'd probably say stuff behind my back, but they never did it in my face. Like what I had, you know, with those. I don't know. It just 
I'm only 30, everybody, but I lived a full life already. I grew up way too fast. That's why I I have first-hand knowledge. I'm not only street smart. I'm very book smart. I was hustling on the streets when I was 12, 13 years old, everybody. I know what real evil looks like. I really do. And it's not like you all think it is. It's your everyday people. Your lawyers, cops, this, judges. Yeah. That's why the system's so corrupt. People look at me and think, oh, it just it's just us that are doing this or what. No. You got to remember, the judges, the cops, the lawyers, all them, they all get through they all get their stuff through people like me. So I've seen it all. I've been through it all. I've been through all ends of the stick of racism, everybody. End of the day, it just makes you stronger. If it if it doesn't make you stronger, it makes you weak. And it makes you like that, that kid, the 18-year-old in Texas recently that just shot his teacher and three students. And his parents want to come out and say, oh, he was being bullied. He was being bullied. Well, excuse me, miss, but I saw the video. Uh, your son's a senior, right? That not only got out of bit, um, bond before his court date, but was beating the crap out of a freshman. Words aren't supposed to hurt you. Words are words. What your son did, going up and beating the crap out of this freshman, then going back to get a firearm to go and do all that, shows how mentally weak your son is. It shows how not aware you and your husband and family were of your situation. Because my son's been bullied twice at both schools. He came and told me right away. As soon as I, fu as soon as I found out, I went and told the principal. And guess what? My son wasn't lying, everybody. Those kids got kicked out. Because thank God that the school he's going to now has a no bullying policy whatsoever and if they prove it you're out of that school and they proved it because not only when they called that little boy up to ask him something they saw him smack a little girl so yeah and guess what everybody he didn't speak english my son was being punked just like his dad was because he didn't speak english but don't get me wrong i didn't get like like that it was never one-on-one -on -one. i was always getting jumped everybody because i always kicked everyone's ass one-on-one -on -one. 109 and 0 on the street 109 street fights Never lost. I don't count getting jumped, though. Yeah, that's a real record for you. Um, but anyways, come to find out that the little boy, that him and his parents just got here from Mexico. They were let in right on our southern border. They were just let right in. Gave, they gave him a bunch of money. Gave him a brand new house right by the school for free. So the dad came over. Oh, you should have seen the dad, everybody. He's that ghetto Mexican mentality. That his shit don't stink. He's going to walk and chew and that, that, that type of, ah, ah, every, every time someone would try to tell him what the world, ah, yeah, you all know what I'm talking about. That old school ghetto Mexican, worse than a little drunk Mexican, at least a little drunk Mexican has heart. This guy, it was, I, when he didn't, because he was getting all, all I'm getting all sweaty and, and pissed off because I heard all that. When I came around the corner, I'm like, oh, you're the dad. Oh, you should, it was like he saw a fucking ghost. He went from all hardcore to a baby back bitch. Because, oh, you can get, I looked into his fucking soul. He knew like, if the security wasn't there and the principal wasn't there. And if I had, you know, if I was, if I had, you know, don't, if the street me would have came out, I would have lit his fucking ass up right there. But I'm better than that. I have a legal gun. I can care. I have all this. I have everything going for me. I'm not going to screw it up for some ghetto ass from across the border. And unfortunately, a lot of us Americans are put in this situation. Just telling you all a little, you know, what's really going on, especially in California. It's really screwed up for people like me. It's hard to be a mixed. It's hard to be a mixed breed, a mixed American, because you have so many people assuming. And yes, this is. Because my Aunt Mary, would, uh, she was, she had to back me up for a lot of this too. Straight white woman. White as can be. But she didn't see color either. This is what's sad. When the media comes out and says, all white people are racist. All white people are evil. All white people are this. Well, I can guarantee you, my Aunt Mary wasn't like that. I'm half white, everybody. And my white family aren't like that. My white family married into different races and breeds and all that. <laughs> That's like, it's so sad. 
So sad how how much and, and you know what it's sad because I I grew up that I grew up like that too because being babysat by Hispanics and everyone it's always the white man's fault this white man's fault that it's always been the white man's fault but you know what people don't want to just take responsibility for your own actions you don't ever stop to think you're in your situation because of you I never blame the white man for everything I've always blamed myself because the white man wasn't holding me back from having what I have I held myself back from being a fuck up and then I had kids I woke up I matured. I have everything I could ever want. I might not be financially secured, you know, like, you know, have hundreds of thousands of dollars, but my kids have everything they can need. My kids have a nest egg, you know. If anything happened to me, my kids are financially secure. So, I'm trying to teach my kids, you know, merchandise, money, that doesn't mean anything. You need values. That's what life's all about. Setting, having a set of rules for yourself. Having values, having self-respect for yourself and for others. You can't respect others if you don't respect yourself first, everybody. I just had to come. I just feel like so much people just need to hear this. So many people hate others because they hate themselves. And that's sad and wrong. Parents, stop letting your children go and shoot up schools. Stop letting your children hurt others. Be more involved in your kid's life, everybody. Plain and simple. Because at the end of the day, well, if, you're, if your child's under 18, whatever happens is on you. Not your child. It's on you. Once they turn 18 and they're out of that household, it's on them. Until then, whatever happens, it's your responsibility. It's your responsibility to teach them right from wrong. It's your responsibility to teach them and guide them to go towards the light towards greatness not spiraling downhill and be a gang member be a drug dealer be this this or this abuse women no that's not that's the, what's wrong with society nowadays is everyone wants to be that rapper with gold teeth that rapper that disrespects women that rapper that does drugs or oh look my dad does this my dad's a pimp i want to be a pimp and it's people need to break off from that already they do being a low life gets you nowhere in life. Being a low life gets you down there or in jail. That's what that does. Trust me, I know. Because God's given me so many chances, I finally woke up and took them. And it took me getting shot at by all types of different gangs. Never overdosed, thank God. It's like God's always told me my limit. Like every time I, I did do drugs, it's like God, God was always up there like, because I've always had that conscience, like, I shouldn't be doing this, this isn't right. But then when I did it, it was like, you need to stop because you're going to get sick. And I did. So I'm saying, you, you, if you feel that inside, you do something wrong, like BLM and Antifa, the good ones, you good ones that don't burn, steal, or loot. If you're in that group, and you see them doing that, and you're standing there thinking, do I really need to be here destroying property? Because I just wanted to be here to be a voice. I wanted to be here like Martin Luther King. I wanted to be here and just peacefully protest, you know, put in that work, you know, march. I didn't want to be here to destroy another black person's property. I didn't want to come over here and hurt one of my own people. If that's if that's how you feel inside, that's God and that's your conscience. That's Jesus. That's the whole universe telling you you're better than that and that you can walk away. You should walk away because at the end of the day, the ones that are burning and destroying and hurting their own people and our own people are the ones that are making your message look bad. And I respect your message because not only do black lives matter, your life matters, your life matters, your life matters, your life matters. All of our lives matter. Plain and simple. I do agree with your message, but I have to tell you, it's not the police. It's your own people doing it to you. It's these Democrat states that are letting your people do this to you. The black on black violence, the brown on brown, the black on brown, the brown on black, the black and brown on Asian, it needs to stop. The black, brown, Asian on white needs to stop. We cannot win when we're fighting each other. United we stand, divided we fall. Plain and simple. We need to remember this. I'm not on anyone's side. I am on all of your sides. Unless you want to be the one that's burning, looting, and hurting people, then I'm going to be on the opposite side of you. And I'm going to do whatever I can. And I will be 
the right hand of God, and I will put the, you know, oh, don't make me go Samuel Jackson on your guys' asses or Pulp Fiction, because that's all I say how I feel. If you've seen Samuel Jackson on Pulp Fiction, when he's in that restaurant and diner, that's how I feel. That's exactly how I feel. I'm going to let you all go, because I can honestly stand here and talk to you all for hours. I'm just, I just, you know, I'm just, can't take it anymore, everybody. And I know a lot of you in these big cities, you know what I'm talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about because you see it every day. Every day, the tension, the hate, the sadness, the depression. It's all from this this administration. It's all from the news outlets. It's all from social media. It's all fear-mongering. They want us all to hate each other. They want us divided. Divide and conquer. That's what Biden and Harris stand for. If you all think that Joe Biden has especially black people's best interests, go to the 90s crime bill, everybody. Look at Kamala Harris when she laughed when people, when black people that smoked weed were locked up and she laughed about it. They don't care about you. They don't care about us. They don't care about anybody but their fat pockets and their politicians. And your votes. That's facts. peace, love, respect, and honor. Like I said, the only reason I'm saying this is because my Aunt Mary, she would be coming out and saying this. So, just spreading the word, everybody. Because this is how I honestly feel, too. Because the red, white, and blue doesn't just stand. It, it, a lot of people think it's Democrat, Republican. No, 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 no. Red, white, and blue, the colors, are actually all of us. It's all of us, everybody. See outside the box. See the bigger, broader picture. As long as you're legal, this country is for you. Because you do it the right way, it's the greatest country in the world. You do it the wrong way, and let all these illegals in. We're nothing but a third world country. That's straight facts. I love everybody in this world, but you have there's laws, there's rules. You have to do it the right way. If my family can go and do it the right way, it took them a lot of money. It took them a lot of years. If my family... And a lot of families can do it. Then don't don't slap them in the face and just run over here illegally because you think that we just want to give you free handouts. You being over here is making it worse for us Americans. It's making the inflation go up, especially when we had already about a million illegal immigrants coming to this, this country, and not one of them were COVID tested. You can fact that fact check that too because everything I've said has already been fact checked. So YouTube, you can't get mad at me because everything I've said is pure facts, pure evidence. Because this is all from your guys' websites and this is all from your voices. Because like I said, I, I listen to both sides, both sides of the aisle, everybody. Peace, love, respect, and honor. I'm not here talking about politics. I'm here just keeping it real with you all. Because what's happening is going to affect our life. And I know you all are seeing it on the gas pumps. I know you all are seeing it in the grocery stores. And I know you all are seeing it on the streets. Talking about homeless people. How are we gonna push people how are we gonna push Americans, especially Americans that aren't vaccinated, out of their homes? Oh, I know why. Because you just want the illegals to come in and take over those homes. That's what's happening right here in my neck of the woods in California. I'm literally three hours from LA, three hours from Vegas, two hours from San Diego, three hours from Tijuana. And two hours from Mexicali. I'm, I'm in the middle of everything, everybody. Everything gets thrown my way. When Northern California doesn't want them, they get thrown my way. I'm in the asshole of California, everybody. When everyone crosses from the borders of California, they come through here first. And most of the time, they don't go up to Northern California because they know they're going to get shipped right back over here. So they stay right here. It causes a lot of tension. A lot of fighting. A lot more kidnappings, a lot more, you know, burglaries, unfortunately, a lot, a lot more crime. But that's what this administration wants. Somebody just pulled up. I got to go, everybody. Somebody just pulled up. Peace, love, respect, and honor. God bless and protect you all. I'm just being brutally, brutally, brutally honest. You know, that's just me.